Welcome to Vinex Studio. Let's start making games. Hi and welcome to another tutorial on creating clouds using Shader Graph in Unity. So the end result that we'll be focusing will be something like this and it will be volumetric. It is not going to be a static plane. So you'll be able to control the height of the cloud and, and the cloud will be visible from both sides or from the top and from the bottom. So let's get started. So I'm using Unity 2021.3.2 for this tutorial. And the render pipeline that I'm using is URP. You can use the same method for standard render pipeline also. And if you're using HDRP, then volumetric clouds are added into HDRP from Unity 2021.2. So if you're having Unity 2021.2 and you're using HDRP, then you don't need to create a shader for that. You can, you can use the Unity's inbuilt volumetric clouds. So I have an empty URP scene here. Let's go ahead and add a 3D plane to our scene. And let's call it cloud layer. And let's make the size of the plane to be 1000 units in X and 1000 units in Z. And let's set the position to Y1000. Okay. So that the plane is in the sky. Okay. And we don't need the grid boxes. So let's uncheck them. Now let's go ahead and create a new shader. So if you're completely new to shader, you have to install the shader graph package. You have to go to window, package manager, and make sure you select Unity registry, search for shader graph and install it. So once you're installed, come to the project window and right click. In the create menu, you should see the shader graph option. And if you're using the URP template of Unity, then Shader Graph is installed by default. So in case of standard render pipeline, you will have to do it manually. So let's go to create Shader Graph and let's go to URP. In case of built-in, you should go to built-in. So URP and we are going to create a lit Shader Graph. Okay, and I'm going to name it as Cloud Shader. So before we go ahead and edit our shader, Let's create a material from the shader. So select the shader, right click and go to create and select material. And let's call it cloud mat. Okay. And let's assign this material to our plane. That is the cloud layer. Okay. So now if you check the cloud layer and the material inside the cloud layer is cloud mat. Now double click on the shader to open it. So now we have the shader graph here. This is the empty shader graph. Now the first thing is you have to go to the graph setting and make sure the surface type is set to transparent and render face is set to both because we want the clouds to be rendered both from bottom and from the top. So once you're done all these settings, we don't require these nodes. So we can delete off these nodes. So we need only the base color and the alpha node, and we need the ob object space positions. The first step of creating a cloud is getting the cloud pattern. And clouds are generally random, so it's better to use a noise to create that randomness. So let's go ahead and add a noise node. So just right click, create node, search for noise, and simple noise. And you can see that if you reduce the size of the noise, the cloud size can be changed. So let me reduce it to 30. So this looks something like a cloud. So I can directly connect it to the base color. So before that, we are going to add a property. It will be of type float and let's call it cloud size. Okay. And let's set the default value to 30. Let's drag and drop to our editor and connect it to the scale of simple noise. So now we have a property called cloud size that you can adjust from the material to control the size of the noise. Now we also need a property to control the density of the cloud. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a power node. So let's go ahead and create another node called power node. Okay. And the output of the noise will go to the power node and let's drag it here. So we'll be creating another property, which is a float and we'll call it cloud density. 
ID. Okay, and let's keep it here. Let's set the cloud density default value to two. Okay, so as you can see here, this is a simple noise and after a power of two, this is the output. That means we have more empty space here. So by changing the value, you can control the density of white and black inside this. Let's go ahead and connect the cloud density to the B input. Just take the output of the power and connect it to the base color. Now let's save the asset. And as you can see on the left side, little clouds have started to appear. So now if you go to the inspector, select the material and play around with the density. And you can see that the cloud pattern is changing. You can also increase the size of the cloud. So let's set them back to the default values. Now the next thing is to add color and transparency to the shader. So you can just multiply the output of the power to a color and then connect it to the base color. And that way we'll be able to add color to the cloud. But if we use a loop function, we'll be able to get a gradient effect between black and white areas of the noise. So let's go ahead and use a loop node. So let's create a loop node. Okay. And let's connect the power output to the T input of the loop node. Okay. And then the output of the loop node will be connected to the base color. Now in the A and B input, we'll connect two colors. So let's right click and create color. And set the mode to HDR. And let's set it to white color. And let's connect it to the A input. We can create another node, another color node. And set the mode to HDR and the color to maybe a little bluish and connect it to B. You need a way to set these colors from outside from the material. So let's go ahead and convert these to properties. Convert to property. So convert this also to property. So we have color and color one which are of type HDR and you can set those colors and love between them to get the base color. Now still there is no transparency involved in this. So let's go ahead and take the output of the power node and multiply it with a variable that we can control from outside. So let's go ahead and create node and multiply up. and then connect the output of the power node to one of the input and connect the output to the alpha. Now to control this, we'll be creating a property called, which is again a float, we'll call it L-O-R alpha. Okay. And we're going to connect it here. Now let's set the default value to maybe something like 0.5. And let's save the asset. So the shader is compiling now. And you, as you can see on the left side, the, we are getting some clouds. And there is some transparency. We are able to see the sky in the black areas. So this is looking much better than before. Now the only thing that is missing here is the clouds are not moving. So to move the clouds, let's go ahead and add a tiling and offset node. So you can adjust the offset value to make the cloud move, but we want the movement to be continuous. So let's use a time node. And we also need a way to control this. So let's create a property which will be vector two because we need to control the moment in both X and Z axis. And let's call it cloud speed. Okay. So you have a vector two and a time node. You need a multiply node. And then multiply the time and the vector two and take the output and give it to the offset. Now you can take this offset and connect it to the UV of simple noise.
Now, if you set a default value, let's say 0 0.03, you can see that the noise is moving left side and a pattern is getting generated. So now let's save the asset and preview on the left side. So you can see that we have some nice looking cloud there. And in the inspector, you can adjust the material properties to have a bigger size cloud. We can just say like 10. So the clouds are bigger now. And if you increase the value, say 120, so we have smaller clouds. And you can also work with the density of the clouds by increasing the cloud density by 3. So if you increase the, this value, basically, if you increase the power value, the number of clouds will decrease. So let's go up, say 0.5, so it's completely cloudy. And you can also play around with the alpha value to make it more brighter. So now the clouds are looking good, but if you go near to the cloud, you can see it is just a flat surface. And if you want to fly through the clouds, that is not possible in this because you need some volume so that you can go through the clouds. Now to achieve that, to have a plane that is subdivided into smaller groups. But the Unity's default plane is not subdivided. There are a few ways to get a subdivided plane. One is using some 3D modeling tool that you can use Blender, you can use Maya, and you can create a subdivided plane and import them to Unity. And then you can assign this material to it. Now, the other option is using a package inside Unity, and it's called Pro Builder. So you can just go to Window Package Manager and Make sure Unity Registry is selected and search for Pro Builder. Yeah, Pro Builder. And click on Install. So once the package is installed, you can delete the plain cloud layer because we'll not be using that plane. So we are back to an empty scene. Now to add a Pro Builder plane, you have to go to Tools, Pro Builder, and click on Pro Builder window. So this will open a new Pro Builder window. Click on New Shape and select Plane. And in the Plane settings, you can select the height cuts and the width cuts. So let's have 10 divisions in the vertical and 10 divisions in the horizontal. So once you're done that, you'll see a small plane symbol on your mouse cursor just hold down the shift key and click on the scene so a plane is added it's just not visible because it's very small so let's select the plane let's go to inspector and set the scale to 1000 in x and 1000 in y okay and the position will be 0 0 and 1000 in y so you can see that this plane is having a mesh inside. So these are the extra subdivisions that are added. So this plane is having small planes inside with vertices. So now what we're going to do is we are going to add noise to these vertices so that they move up and down, creating a illusion of a cloud. So let's select the plane. You can play around with the value here. You will have a Pro Builder shape script here. So if you if you want more horizontal or more vertical division, you can change the value here. And as you can see, the material is set to lit. So let's set it to cloud material. So now we have the cloud going, but it is similar to what we had earlier. There is no difference between the cloud now and the cloud we had earlier. Now to get the volumetric effect, just go to the cloud shader. And let's make some changes to that. So first of all, let's take the vertex and keep it here. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to multiply this noise with the normals of the plane. So we need to create a normal vector, normal vector node, and set the space to object space. Okay. And now let's multiply. that 
with the power node so the output of the power node and the normal will be multiplied okay so you can see we are having a different output here the normals look like this and multiplied with the noise it will look like this now you can just add this noise to the position and then feed it inside the position of the vertex but we also need a way to control this so let's create another multiply node and add this here add the output here and let's create a property which will be a vector 3 and let's call it cloud height okay and let's connect the cloud height as the second input to the multiply now we need to add this to the position so let's create a position node okay and i think we can place the vertex here and let's create a add node so we're basically adding the noise to the already existing position of, of the vertices so let's go ahead and add them sorry but also the position will be set to object and the output will be connected here and let's connect the output to the world space position okay so now let's just save this asset so the shader is compiled and as you can see there's no changes in the cloud it is still the same it is still that flat surface that's because we haven't set the cloud height it is still at zero so let's set it to 10. so now if we go it is still very small so let us set it to 100 okay so now you can see there are some waves forming in our cloud so depending on the height you set the clouds will be moving and you can also adjust the cloud speed here so in order to make it very clear let's just reduce the increase the density okay So now we have a volumetric cloud. So depending on your requirement, you can play around with the cloud size, the density, the alpha value, the cloud speed, and the cloud height. So now you have a volumetric cloud in Unity. So you can use this technique in both universal render pipeline and and standard render pipeline so that's it for this tutorial if you have any other questions you can leave them in the comment box below thank you and see you again thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share